uh, I'm standing here in Central Park in Ashland, Kentucky, and uh, you see this row of mounds here. These prehistoric mounds. It's like they call this the necklace or something. What you can see here. I'll go to the sign. I'm not sure if these are Adena mounds or not, or just some woodland era. See the area they're in. I said it's a park here. I'm going to walk past them so you can get an idea here. They're about uh, probably about five, five and a half feet high or so. This one here has a, a large tree growing out of it. There's a sign up here. Okay, sign here it says one and one half miles northeast in Central Park is an irregular row of, of mounds, part of a chain built by prehistoric men who were the forerunners of American Indians. Many of the remains of that ancient people, which once dotted this area, were leveled as the town expanded. Some of these were burial mounds, others contained artifacts such as arrowheads, stone utensils. So they weren't all burial mounds, some were uh, ceremonial. And even ones that they're saying now were burial mounds where they found human remains, they're not real sure if they were specifically for burial or for some other type of ceremony. Tried to uh, do a once around here so you can get this from different angles. They're saying a lot more of these mounds were dotted the area, but they were just leveled. There's one thing I read there were literally thousands and thousands of miles from the Ohio, mounds in the Ohio Valley that were leveled. These are just a few that are still left over. I'm walking along uh, the other uh, platform mound, and the Wood County, or the Washington County Public Library is on top of this, as you can see. But this is the other uh, quadrano. The quadrano is down that way, about oh, a quarter mile over over those trees that way. But you can see here. Um, now you. Now you can see right here is the uh, one of the ramps. You can see the, that indentation there. That's, that's what the, one of the ramps there. This would be, I think this would be more like toward the west or western ramp. This library was built on top of this Hopewell, late Hopewell mound here. This is uh, some more of it here. I'll try to find the, uh, the other ramp. Yeah, right here is another ramp right up here. This it had uh, like four ramps, just like the other one did there on the other video. Was the other ramp was right in here? You can see it's been leveled off there because of those buildings. But, uh, I'm walking around the upper level. Like I said, the library's right here, so I guess a person's allowed to walk on this. You know, this is a sacred mound. Now here would be, coming around here is where the other ramp would have been. As you, as you can see, it's been leveled out here to make a passageway to the door. But this is the other quadrano here. I'm just walking around 
We'll do a complete 360 around here. There's the Washington County Public Library there. As you can see. So they had a vision, I guess, of making a, a place of a li public library on a, you know, a place of you know, mystery, uh, or a knowledge, ancient knowledge. And this is it here. The other one would have been, the other ramp would have been approximately right where those stairs are. Let's give you another view of it. Now I'm right, now this is the, uh, the Quadrino here. The Capitolum, where we came from, was just right up on the other side of that house there, where the library was. But you can see the uh, ramp right there. And the Muskingum River is about a quarter mile or maybe a little farther down that way, where the Sacravia is also. And I'm walking here on the pathway. I don't believe they want people walking up on top of the mounds. I'm not sure if it's right there's the other ramp, including the sign here. We'll get to that here, but that's one of the four ramps of these platform mounds. Okay, and there's a sign for the quadrant. Now, the other one was called the Capitolium, but it's almost identical to this, this one here. These are late Hopewell, like I said, nine. 900 AD or maybe a little earlier. Like I said, they didn't, to my knowledge, they didn't find burials or uh, any temples on top of these. They, they, they were ceremonial platform mounds, of some type. They found uh, some arrowheads, things like that, artifacts. But uh, these were not like burial mounds or anything. They're more ceremonial type things, but no structures were on the. Now I'm walking across here at the mound. This is the ramp on the other side. Like, I believe these were oriented north, south, east, west. This would be, I believe, the western side. Here, first side would have been the northern. Now I'm going to proceed to the southern ramp. Now this is the southern ramp here. Sacravia right down in there. Late Hopewell. You can see the uh, this platform mound. This is sort of the you know a newer type addition onto this culture. What these are basically is they're, they're just different cultures that came together you know, shared their ideas and their ceremonies, uh, etc. Because actually the Hopewell culture is the meeting of so many other different Indian cultures that it's actually hard to even use a word to describe it other than it's a woodlands culture. Now this is the, the ramp I came in on, so you can see. On, it's approximately, I'd say about maybe seven and a half feet tall and probably it was taller when it was made as you know they settled over the years that's the last of the ramps there uh, that's where the Capitolium is the uh, where the Marietta Public Library it's a diorama the museum you can see there was a mound there you can see the See how that was arranged. But the mound was out here the right. And then there's the second meter, which goes to the Muskingum River right there. And then this also, uh, if you look down here in the winter, if you start right there, look in the winter, uh, up above the ridge there, uh, which was also on the other side of Muskingum, you can see where the sun set for the winter solstice. Then next to the, uh, this ceremony of the ocean, there would be this one, which has the uh, Conus Mound right there. There's a little thing around it, incorporated into these Hopewellian works. You see the walls there. This is now a cemetery. Uh, this is settlers came in, 
but these are the type of artifacts that are found in these mounds, a lot of times ceremonial objects. That back there is a, a canine, a bear or wolf canine, I'm not sure, but like the objects. And these type celts here, often found in these type pipe here, animal effigy pipes, associated probably with some type of clans. Flint, I don't know if that's Flint Ridge Flint or not, it sort of looks like it. Some of the other type objects found, there's a, there are some pipes that they used uh, for healing possibly, uh, like they would blow smoke there through there into the, into the, uh, it was like medicinal smoke supposed to be, which could or heal, but probably a lot of times didn't. Okay, more objects here, just showing you the type of things here that were found in these mound complexes. I'm standing here in front of the Conus Mound. You can see the uh, Marriott, Ohio. Pan here real slow, but you can see all these Revolutionary War heroes. And there's a lot of Civil War as well, but that's the actual Adena Mound right there, called the Conus. Uh, and this is the sacred area around the, the mound. There's the mound itself. You can see it's one of the larger ones, but. Uh, this is probably where they got a lot of the earth, the burrow pit, which also incorporate. Now there were other mounds and other wall, there were wall sections to this, but they've all been pretty much leveled. But this is an Adena mound that was actually worked into the Hopewell mounds as well. So it just shows how the um, mound builder culture used, uh, you know, it wasn't, there was no real fine Line, I mean, lines there were it was ge pretty general, broad uh, nature worship type culture, worship of the great spirit, that type of thing. And they used each other's ideas, and like I said, it was a many culture. But this, this mound here is uh, comparison size to, I believe, the uh, Crescent Mound at one time, which was in another video of mine, and uh, the um, 
actual Adena mound over in Chillicothe because they, they were bigger mounds. They were excavated. Now there was a burial found on top of this mound, but it was that burial occurred like a lot later. This mound was built like most of them, built in stages. I don't know if it's ever been completely excavated down to the bottom, but I'm gonna, here's the stairs here. I'm going to walk up to the top. That's, I'd say it's about you know, 25 feet high to the top there. There's the burrow pit around. Like I said, there were walls all around and other mounds, but the city of Marietta uh, removed most of them for, through progress or whatever. Now I'm up on top here of the mound. You can see out around it. Like I said, this is not nowhere near the size of the Grave Creek Mound, but this is one of the larger ones, and uh, it's still intact. There was a burial found approximately over that time capsule. I don't know how many feet down, but like it was a later burial. But uh, this is actually an Adena. This is one of the first mounds that was built in this area over a period of centuries and centuries. And those other the Capitolium and the the other mound are approximately that way, probably about a mile or so. And this was just all earthworks all around through here. Oh yeah, the other mound was called the Quadrino, the Capitolium and the Quadrino. There's two platform mounds over that way, about a mile. And you can just see I'm standing on top. I'm gonna take a quick walk around here. My battery holds out. Once again, I'm walking along the side here. I'm just gonna like walk around it. Just give you an idea of the lay, like and there's the burrow pit there, or it's a sacred circle, more now, and it was probably, that was built to actually make this sacred circle here, where they designed these, some of them, they're not, they're all different, all these mounds have different aspects to them, like I said, this compares in size to the Crescent Mound at one time, and the uh, which Crescent Mound is no longer in existence. That was that's up towards Moundsville, West Virginia, and the uh, Adena Mound, which is over in Chillicothe, that oh, which was on the estate of Thomas Worthington, but that was excavated completely. So you can see here. I'm going to take it once around, give you a good idea, just a little walking tour here. And uh, maybe this might inspire you to come out and see this for yourself. And if you don't get around to it, at least you'll still have seen it and somebody else here is filming as well. So somebody knows what's valuable.